good afternoon. Literally. Well, it might be 1159. I don't know. PST anyway. You can see I'm in a different spot. We, I flew to Arizona last night. Brent flew in this morning. He just got here. And so we are at our place in Arizona and it is gorgeous here. Beautiful sun, nice little breeze. I'm going to go for a nice long inline skate after our visit together today. And uh, we're here for the week and then I'll head back home and then we've got crazy travel. We've got Chicago and Arizona and Mexico and Spain and Arizona again and Calgary all before the end of the year. So you'll probably see me broadcasting from some different spots, which might be kind of fun. So today, let me just check our time. Hold on. Yes, it's exactly 12 o'clock. Oh, how do you like my friend? Hello, friend. We call him the chaperone. <laughs> this is our, our bedroom and he watches over the goings on. Um, anyway, we are going to get started. It's protein powder subject today. Uh, and the fact that your protein powder is caca. It is um, likely uh, most of what's out there is not the greatest and we're going to talk about why that is and why you need to be cautious and what you need to look for and some brands that I'm going to suggest for you. And I've got four today we're going to talk about, but we want to go into the history of protein powders first. I was kind of curious. And so when I did some research, I found that after World War II, you know, we had kind of mastered the whole idea of dehydrating food and powdering food and, and all of that for our soldiers. So uh, there was some spillover of that into uh, regular culture and bodybuilders started picking up on the idea early in the 1950s. There started to be the first initial products powdered to increase protein and energy and and all sorts of things in bodybuilders, power lifters, etc. And it largely stayed with that group of people for some time and then it started to disseminate into other fitness areas, other types of athletes and then into the general population as we see it today it's um takes up a uh, prime grocery store space and there are even whole stores dedicated to shelves and shelves and shelves of those big monster um, tubs of protein powder. So what's the story? Well, the first protein powder was developed um, by, I think it was called um, Cava or Cave, uh, I can't remember the exact name, but they put in things like kelp and wheat germ and herbs and soy and egg whites and, and largely it was free of actually preservatives and um, a lot of the toxins that are found in the protein powders today, but it was very soy heavy, which we'll talk about why maybe that's not such a good idea, but it was a good start. And then unfortunately, uh, like uh, we do with a lot of our food products, we took it and ran and raped it and pillaged it and destroyed it. And now what's on the shelf is um, in large part, not even food anymore. So let's talk about that. The biggest issues, we're going to go through several issues, but one of the biggest issues is what I just referred to, which is the fact that these protein powders are highly, highly, highly processed. And the way to highly process is to throw a bunch of heat at it, which I don't know if you know much about protein powders. Hi, Sin. I don't know if you know much about protein powders, but protein is... If you remember my fish oil talk, I talked about the instability of fish oil. Well, proteins are actually kind of unstable as well. And if you put too much heat on them, they are going to denature and they are not going to do their job in your body. And a lot of protein powders are processed under very high heat. So the protein that you're actually getting is already denatured and ineffective. So that's one thing, this highly processed um, attitude we take toward developing these protein powders. Second is preservatives. And there are lots of preservatives. Just to uh, mention a few, maltodextrin, which is an artificial sweetener. It's often made um, by soy lecithin, corn, different things that are highly allergenic. And the problem with maltodextrin, if it is, is if it does have the soy lecithin in it, um, that is processed by exposing it to hexane, which is very toxic. So this highly processed with preservatives, and uh, I'll re-mention that again. So it's maltodextrin, soy lecithin, and xanthan gum are some of the main 
preservatives that are in there. And xanthan gum can cause a lot of bloating. And it, sorry, the soy lecithin, obviously made from soy, maltodextrin, um, the, the big thing with that is that it causes weight gain. And the article I read actually said farty farts. It causes you to have some gas. And uh, it's just not good on your digestive system. So the maltodextrin, not good. Soy lecithin, not great uh, because of the way the soybean is processed with the hexane. And then the xanthan gum also causes a lot of bloating, digestive issues. And that's the one that I was mentioning can be made from wheat, corn, or soy, which of course are all potentially highly allergenic for folks. So we've got highly processed, we've got preservatives. We've got that a lot of those protein powders are um, GMO, uh, genetically modified, which we are learning more and more about that maybe is not the best thing for our DNA and our genetics and our health in general. So of course at the end we're gonna talk about you wanna look for a non-GMO protein powder. Okay, so GMO's no good. Allergens, we made it just a little bit of mention to that in regard to the preservatives, but a lot of these soys are made from whey protein, which is dairy. Uh, they are made from eggs in high concentration, which if you are sensitive to eggs at all, be taking a big scoop of protein powder, which is the equivalent of several, several eggs, can be very hard on your system if you're sensitive to eggs at all. And corn and wheat. And so there are some of those things in a lot of those mass produced protein powders that are out there. So we want to look for any allergens that we might have that we might be susceptible to when we're taking a protein powder. Uh, more obvious artificial sweeteners. So we talked about how maltodextrin is an artificial sweetener. It's kind of an additive. Well, there are also some more obvious ones like aspartame and in Canada, saccharin. And so a lot of the sweeteners that they use, they can say, then say, oh, we're sugar-free, but they have these artificial sweeteners in them. And you may have to read down the many, many ingredients lists before you get to some of those sweeteners and chemical words and things that you want to be aware of. One of the biggest ones, one of my biggest complaints is that protein powders are totally unregulated. So the FDA has very little influence after initial labeling. They're never checked again. They're not batch or lot tested. So you can take a canister protein powder and look at exactly what's in it. And, and as you probably know, ingredients are listed in the order which they occur in amounts. So the first ingredient has the biggest amount of that in the product. The second ingredient has the next biggest amount. That's only tested like one time when it hits the shelf. And so years later, you cannot know what you're eating is actually what's in there. And so that goes across all protein powders. No protein powders are regulated. Uh, for that matter, no over-the-counter supplements are regulated to the degree that a pharmaceutical grade supplement is. And again, pharmaceutical grade supplements are those that are batch and lot tested and held to the standards of what pharmaceuticals are. So they are tested regularly. They, you know, they are blind tested and all sorts of rigor, how do you even say that word? I don't know, but all sorts of testing that occurs to make sure you're getting what they say you're getting. Well, protein powders don't fall under that. So they're very, very poorly regulated. And that is scary because not just the ingredients, but what's not listed that could be in there or contaminants that are in there that uh, they don't have to talk about. So the fact that they're not tested and they're not pharmaceutical grade, um, and especially with the amount that some people take, that can be a very big problem. Okay, highly processed, preservatives, not uh, the fact that it's GMO, allergens, um, artificial sweeteners like aspartame and saccharin, unregulated. Next, heavy metals. Yes, heavy metals are in protein powders. They have found arsenic, cadmium, lead, and mercury in uh, blind testing of, I think, the one study that I pulled up, and all of this is going to be listed in the comments section, but the one study that I pulled up had 14 or 12 or 14 protein powders tested and only one of them was free of heavy metals. The rest of them had them and in amounts that would be quite surprising. Not trace, significant. Um, and particularly when you're thinking about, again, that a lot of people that buy those big jugs of protein powder are doing scoop, scoop, scoop because they think more is better. 
I'm going to talk about that too. So heavy metals. Now I want to also talk about teens. I've kind of alluded to it a little bit and that is that some folks that use these big protein powders and of course the most common buyer of those big jugs of muscle whatever are 16 to 24 year old boys and they are highly hormonal, they are still growing, they are still developing muscle and they want to look all svelte and muscly like the guy on the cover and so they think oh it says one scoop I'll do four scoops and the problem with that is we can't process that amount of protein at one time so if you're taking 50 grams of protein in one sitting it's a waste of money and dangerous because you're either going to just pee it out it's going to be turned into fat or it's going to create some toxicity issues in your body so that's that's number one and these teens are highly impressionable so that's a big concern area as well, is that more isn't necessarily better. There's lots going in and on in those protein powders that we may not even know about. And so we need to be cautious of that. And again, I will list the resources that I've used to put this data together. And frankly, I was, I already knew these uh, protein powders were bad, but I just didn't know how bad. So another example is there was an Olympic bobsledder named Pavle Jovanovich and he tested positive on a drug test and he had not been taking any drugs and so of course he followed up and realized he had switched out his protein powder about two months before and so he had it blind tested and guess what that pro that protein powder had substances in it that were on the Olympic list of the banned list they were not listed on the label he had no idea you know why on earth these product these um uh, substances would be in there but he settled out of court for a good amount of money and there's been a couple of NFL players that have done the same thing because these protein powder manufacturers know that they are unguarded there's there's nobody regulating them there's nobody watching them and so they really can put in anything they want to to get the results that people are hoping for so they run back to super supplements and buy more keep that in mind okay let's just review Hi, Sonia. I'm so glad you're here. I'm sorry about the mix up today. I told everybody it was 10 o'clock. I had some else at 10 o'clock. I'm glad you made it. And hi, Gabriel. So good to see you. So reviewing highly processed, tons of preservatives, maltodextrin, soy lecithin, and xanthan gum being the main ones. They are GMO, a lot of them, non organic, which I didn't even mention. Uh, there's allergens um, like wheat, egg, soy, dairy. Artificial sweeteners, they're unregulated, scary, big red light going off. Um, the fact that nobody's looking over the shoulder of these manufacturers to say, hey, you can't put that in there because it doesn't say that on your label and it's not safe for a 16-year-old boy. Heavy metals, cadmium, arsenic, mercury, just to name a few, have all been found in these protein powders. And if you want to know more about that, just check the list below and click on any of those research studies that I'll include there uh, within the hour after our broadcast today. And then we talked about a couple of professional athletes who have started calling these protein companies to the carpet because these poor athletes are testing positive for banned substances and they're not taking anything except for maybe they switch their protein powder and suddenly they have banned substances in their body. So that's scary. So, now that you know your protein powder is caca, what do you do? Well, I have researched over the last probably 10 or 15 years four protein powders that I love and can genuinely recommend to you. And I wanted to provide a, an array. A couple of them are vegan, so if you are not a meat eater, you can still get a good source of protein. Um, a couple of them are paleo friendly, some of them are not paleo friendly. So we'll talk about each one and their benefits and then you can decide what works best for you. So the f I'm gonna do them in like, you know, when they announce the um, uh, Miss USA and they go fourth, third, second, first, you know, all of that business, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so our fourth runner up is Vega and Vega is this guy here and I know it's backwards and this is just the travel pack and it's one of the benefits uh, that I think is really good is you can go to Whole Foods and Vega has a million different flavors and you can grab one of these packs and um, take it to work with you or whatever so it's handy 
It is vegan. This, I would say, is the most readily available one. So Whole Foods, PCC, if you're living in the um, Washington area, uh, probably most good health food stores would have this because it's probably one of the most popular natural protein supplements that is out there. It's got a good price point. It's not $70, so that's good. It's vegan, gluten-free, no sugar, and non-GMO certified. So that's exciting. That's that little symbol down there. You want to look for that on your food, your non-GMO um, label right there. Okay. The reason I don't use this one all the time is because I want to get as much of my nutrients from food as possible. And so this has a bunch of other stuff in it. This is a nutritional shake. So it's got other things in it that I already take from other products or I eat whole foods. So instead of putting spinach in my powder, I've got it in my smoothie already, so I don't, I don't need it. But on the go, this is awesome because it has some greens in it and it's got the protein in it. And this is 20 grams of protein, which is more than enough. You never wanna take more than 20 at a time. Your body's just gonna get rid of it. It's a waste of your money. It's not good on your system. So keep that in mind. And my little trick is I make a big smoothie with probably 25, maybe even 30 grams of protein, and I split it in at least two. So then I have a nice smoothie in the morning, and then I've got something for after a workout later, and then I'm not getting all of that protein at one time, okay? So that's the Vega one. There are other Vega types. I haven't looked at all of their ingredients, but I'm sure they're probably pretty consistent with um, the quality of this one. Okay, next. I went all the way to Whole Foods to get one of my favorites and it wasn't there. So I'm gonna show you a picture of it. Here we go, pumpkin protein powder. And I know that's backwards. So isn't that funny? Um, pumpkin protein powder. Okay, so you wanna get a pen and a piece of paper because I'm gonna list the ingredients for you. Oh wait. Okay, you ready? Pumpkin seeds. That's it. That's all that's in here. Just pumpkin seeds. Just protein from pumpkin seeds. And it's awesome because it's organic and it's delicious and it's pretty tasteless and it's very smooth and I kind of love it. And this is the cheapest by far. I think it's like $18 or $20 for this whole canister of it. So this is a really good one. And one of the things, if I forget to say at the end, is switch up your protein powders. Don't just take the same one every day, day after day after day after day after day, month after month, year after year, okay? We vary our food, don't we? We seasonally eat vegetables differently. We have chicken one night, we have beef another night. Well, our protein powders should be the same. So I always have two on hand, maybe even three. And I try to switch it out a little bit. Now I have a favorite and it is my queen for today, uh, but I do admit I do switch it occasionally if I'm making a sweeter smoothie or I want something with vanilla in it or whatever, then I might use one of these other brands. That pumpkin seed one is great for if you're adding uh, protein powder to baked goods, that's a really good one. So that's the pumpkin powder one. Also vegan. So the Vega is vegan, the pumpkin powder one is vegan, the next one I'm sharing is also vegan. Okay, ready? Number two, second, no, wait. It should have been fourth, third, should have been third, second, first, and then the queen, right? Well, we're going fourth, third, second, and then first is like the big winner. Okay, so number two is Sun Warrior, Warrior Blend plant-based protein. Now Sun Warrior makes a couple different proteins and this is my favorite. It's got tons of protein. Um, let me tell you exactly how much. Um, yes, yeah, so it's also 20 grams of protein for a scoop, so that's awesome. And it is a uh, vegan, soy-free, dairy-free, no sugar added, all of that. It's organic. It's got coconut in it, goji berry, hemp, and pea protein. And this is not paleo, okay? But it is vegan for those that want it. We talked about the pumpkin one. This is paleo, 
okay? The Vega one also is not paleo. So if you are looking for paleo, you have two choices today. You have this one and our queen for the day, which is coming right up. If you are vegan, you have three choices. You have the Vega, you have the Sun Warrior, Warrior Blend, and you have the pumpkin. Okay, so lots of choices for everybody. Okay, nobody needs to get upset. Okay, our big winner, our first place queen is vital proteins, collagen peptides, collagen peptides. And this one is delicious. And I see a couple questions coming up. I will get to those, but we will uh, take another couple minutes just to wrap up our talk for today. So vital proteins, collagen peptides, here's what I love. Short chain amino acids, naturally derived from pasture fed moo cows. Collagen we are so deficient in, here's why. In the olden days, we used to eat parts of the bone, the cartilage. We would cook more whole animal instead of bits and pieces of it. And so we got a lot of the collagen in our meat and the, the joint um, tissue and tendons and all of that. Well, we don't eat that anymore because we go and get the really super clean, like boneless breast of chicken and I'll have the most organic, clean, um, like I don't want any bits on it. Well, all of those like gooey bits are collagen and we need that. So if you're gonna insist on eating super clean meat, which is perfectly fine, and by clean in this example, I mean stripped free of fat and any of the collagen and tendons and joint material, then that's perfectly fine. But we should start supplementing with collagen. And it's not just about hair, skin, and nails. It's about your cartilage between your joints and your discs and all of that stuff and, and tons of functions in your body. So it's really important and this is a beautiful source of protein. And this one is also a very good price point and it is 18 grams of protein per serving and tasteless. Like how often can you get that from a protein powder? And that's another thing, you ever notice that a lot of those uh, other protein powders, they have a sort of a bitter taste or chemically taste or an aftertaste. Well, that means it's that much further away from real food because real food doesn't have that taste to it, does it? So vital proteins, collagen peptides, love it. Queen for the day, I wish I had a tiara, but I don't, I'm sorry. We're reviewing for those that have just joined us. We hate, that's strong, we really don't like some of the regular protein powders because highly processed, full of preservatives, GMO, artificial sweeteners, allergens, unregulated, heavy metals, okay? And there's lots of independent testing to show that that's not just somebody's opinion. So, now that you know your protein powder is caca, here are four choices. Vega, pumpkin seed protein powder by Omega Nutrition. All these links will be down below in a moment. Sun Warrior, Warrior Blend. They have others, but I really like the Warrior Blend. I like what's in it. And Vital Proteins, queen for the day, okay? Vital Proteins, collagen peptides. Now they also have a beef gelatin, which is to die for. Like I know those two things don't necessarily go together, beef gelatin and to die for, but they do because it's tasteless. It will thicken anything that's warm. You wanna thicken up a soup, you wanna thicken up a recipe, you wanna thicken up whatever, put it right in there. I put it in my smoothie, makes it just a little bit thicker. And it's tons of protein, short chain amino acids, same derivation as the collagen uh, peptides, and it's delicious. So that one's also an option, the beef gelatin or the collagen peptides. But collagen peptides are uh, definitely a, uh, the first initial buy and a good go-to. So what are you looking for in your protein powder? If you hate all the suggestions I've just made it, made it, that I've just made, you want to look for as few ingredients as possible. You wanna look for non-GMO. You wanna look for organic, okay? You wanna limit the allergens that are in your protein powders. Um, I also would try to stick to your whole food nutrition type stores versus your super supplement stores. Motivations are different for both of those stores as far as consumer um, impression, and so that's something to consider. Okay. Couple questions. How many grams of protein per serving? Well, Amy, it's different in most. So 
Two of them, I said 20, one of them was 18, and I think the pumpkin is nine grams per scoop, so you can really monitor that. And again, as I was saying, you can't process 30 grams of protein all at once. So either make it and split it into two, or just don't put in as much, you're wasting your money, and it's, you're just, it's going right through you, so um, consider that. Uh, Gabriel, she wants to know if the pumpkin protein powder, if the pumpkin seeds were soaked before making the powder in order to help break down the ph uh, phytic acid. I do not know that. Um, and I will answer at my leisure. I'll look that up for you. Or I'm also going to include the site to Omega Nutrition, uh, which is the pumpkin seed prep uh, powder site. And you can check that out on your own as well. Shakeology. That is such a great question, Amy. That is a loaded gun, however. So here's what I'm gonna say about Shakeology. I was very judgmental of it at first, and then I took a closer look at the ingredients, and they're not horrible. However, uh, the, um, some of the concepts behind the rest of the program I'm not a super big fan of, and I think, frankly, you can do cheaper, better ingredients in other protein or nutrition powders. So Shakeology is not terrible. I believe it's free of corn and soy and dairy and it doesn't have a lot of preservatives and I'm pretty sure most of what's in there is organic. I don't know about its GMO status but that is my very loose impression of Shakeology. Okay so in closing take that big tub of muscle whatever and throw it out uh, get one of the four that I recommended. There are links down below for each and every one of those. And again, if that, those, oh, by the way, just a reminder, Sun Warrior Protein and the Vega are um, easily obtained at most health food grocery stores. Whole Foods definitely has them and lots of the other health food grocery stores do as well. The pumpkin one, I believe it's out of Canada. And so I've seen it in some health food stores. I've definitely seen it in Canada. Lots of the grocery stores, uh, health food grocery stores carry it, but easily obtained online. So I, I put the link to Amazon for that down below. And then the vital proteins, get it online, get it through my Amazon link. That's the cheapest place you're gonna get it. And uh, it really is worth trying. You will be so surprised at the tasteless, um, very easily usable, uh, and just the great ingredients. In fact, it is basically one ingredient, pasture-raised moo cow, and that's awesome. Okay, so a couple things off topic. Thank you for listening. First of all, I love that you guys are tuning in. Please let me know any topics that you are interested in hearing about, and say um, hello to my friend. And uh, also, the three-day reset, the book that I just released in July, I wanted to just tell you that I am doing some private coaching for that. It's $149 for three 30-minute sessions with me. We go through the process of the book. We get to ask any questions and personalize it for you specifically. And you also get added to a private Facebook group for the three-day reset. So if you haven't purchased it yet, you can purchase it on my website and it's called the book bundle. And so it's a bundle, three coaching sessions and a private Facebook group. And so you can definitely take advantage of that. Also, I wanted to let you know, some of you don't know that we, uh, we, I always refer to me as we, uh, well fit and fed is on Instagram as well fit and fed. And I would love for you to go and check us out there as well and follow us, um, on that, uh, platform as well. So we'll be back next Wait, say it again. I'll be back next Friday. And if you have any topics you want to talk about, I would love to know. And again, I thank you so, so much for tuning in. One last question. Amy says, if you get 30 grams of protein from different sources, can you process them? For our body wants you to get 30 grams for breakfast. Yes, I'm aware of for our body. Love, love, love it. And I think it's a kind of a whole different thing if you are getting kind of like you know, your egg and your three pieces of bacon and your, you know, however you're doing it for your four hour body. I think that's different. And I think we just need my uh, leaving point is that we want to be careful about people, often young boys who are doing scoop after scoop after scoop, possibly putting their bodies at risk because of the concentrated heavy metals, toxins, preservatives, artificial sweeteners that they're getting in their bodies. And the fact that it is tough to process that much um, protein.
processed protein at one time. And so, Amy, I think you're fine with the 30 grams of protein one hour uh, by when you get out of bed, you have to eat it within one hour. That's an excellent program. I'm super supportive of it. And, um, and so, yes, you are fine with that. Good. Okay, everybody, thank you so much again, and I'll look forward to seeing you next week. All right.